Salute. Salute. Episode one. Yeah. Shaved heads. Mm, same barber, baby. Time flies. I'm gonna put this back here. That's so. scary. I'm worried somebody's gonna knock it over and ruin my painting. Right. You look awesome. Thank you, sir. It doesn't fit back there, so we'll keep it we'll just, over. We'll just keep it over there. there. Keep it over Are there. Are we keeping it off TV? Oh no, this is part of the show. But oh. the show's already started. Oh shit, then. <laughs> but no bad words. Oh shoot, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick, we go way, way back. We uh, share the same barber, two for one deals, and all those cliches about bald people. But we're proving shaped heads. Do you like it when people touch your head? I hate it. I hate it. Because there's so many times people are like, oh, you're good luck, don't buddy, wish. or whatever. I don't know, they do the thing. And I'm like, I don't come and touch your head just because you have whatever hair. I know. Why, why like strangers, like, oh, good, you're, whatever, you're at the bar, anywhere else, like, oh, good luck. Like, I don't even know you, man. Why? Don't know you, don't touch me. Especially my and head. And we're nice people, so you, you know, you kind of feel bad even, saying. Like, especially my head. Exactly. And also, how about like, people make fun, like you can't make fun of anybody who's obese, you can't make fun of somebody who's ugly, but they make fun of us follically challenged people all the time. We have feelings too, right? Or no? They've done studies that, 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 that say that, um, I think there's a higher level of, um, I think it's like a perceived authority or perceived power with the shaved head. Nice. Yeah, you remember when Cal Ripken Jr. And, and Jordan, they started shaving their heads in like the early 90s. And guess what? We started losing our hair a little bit after that, but that kind of it became cool. us. Yeah. It became cool. It's it was, not like a superpower. Fortunately, we have good shaped heads. Yeah, we do. Because there's so many people that if they didn't have this, they would look ugly. <laughs> exactly. They would look really ugly. Let's talk painting, because um, this is very special to me. Ryan, I gotta give you all the thanks. Quick note for all of you guys watching, why, why did this come up? Why is he guest number one on the show? Um, COVID lockdown, we're all trapped. And I read a post that you put, and you said it's so important to challenge yourself. Um, you know, have visions, create in whatever field. Do you remember that post? How many people followed you? And tell us a little bit about that real quick, because that kind of, in a way, led to this. Yeah, I do remember, I remember the premise of the post. I don't remember what, I specifically said on the post, but like you said, we were in COVID, we were locked down, everybody was facing like crazy challenges uh, with their life being turned upside down. And in general, I'm always trying to, I don't know, push myself, try new things, expand, and I don't know, maybe I talk more than I do, but you know, I was like, you know, I'm gonna try to share a message with my friends, like, hey, the world's going crazy, but like do something for us or do something for you. Um, as far as how many people, I, I got a lot of good feedback on that. It was interesting though, some of the people, it was like a negative thing. I think some people, you either responded one or two ways. Like one, you were- some, Up for the challenge or you're like, why are you pushing me to do something? Yeah, well, you're like, you're motivated. Like, okay, I'm down with this, I agree, let's do it. Or it was like personal, like I can't or, I don't know. Some people was like a kind of a backlash. Um, I don't know. It was it was interesting. Fast forward to COVID. Your post, I draw, and my wife sees my first painting. She goes, "Wow, a four-year-old painted this. Sketch. This is so bad." Sketch, right? Yeah, and I felt kind of offended. And I saw your post. I'm like, you know what? Give me a year. And three days after that post, I said, "I'm going to picture myself with my room and my apartment covered in paintings." And you were the first painting, other than my wife, that I painted. I wanted to paint. People that I looked up to and admired doing things they love. I saw the photo, and what did you name that photo? What did you say it was? It, it was, I think it was like um, Happy Place or Ryan's Happy Place or, or along those lines, right? What was your mental thought when you were in that place taking that photo? Do you know where that was? No, tell, tell, tell everybody. Yeah. Uh, that was in Banff, Canada. Uh, it's a ski resort, maybe, I don't know, a couple hours from um, Calgary. Yeah, world-class ski resort, amazing mountains, as you can see, just one of the most beautiful places I've ever skied. And I was there, uh, had some time off, went skiing, and just, I don't know, you know me with the mountains, the, mm -hmm. the solitude of, I love to ski, but even not skiing, I do the, like in the, in the summertime, camping, hiking, in that place, it was, it's just, you go out there and it's hard to think about anything else. You're just like, happy. I knew you for more than 12 years ago, and when we met, I said, he's gonna go far. Like, you, you can see people that have a vision. So I was certain you were gonna go far, and I kept in touch with you, and we kept being friends, and every time I saw you, 
It was never a public look at my career. It was always a big smile on your face, traveling the world, doing things. And what I love about Ryan is he never brags about his career. We're going to talk about that also. But he brags about time with his friends, time with his family, time with nature. And that's when I painted it. I'm like, yeah, that's a kid who fulfilled that inner dream to make it to the top of the mountain in life, in career, in friendships. So I present to you Ryan's happy place. Was I uh, onto something with what I painted? Yeah, I've, yeah I mean, I, I've been blown away since you told me um, you know, that I had a little bit of an influence on, on your painting uh, endeavors. And I don't know, I, I think maybe we all do yourself, everybody, you just, you kind of get caught up in life and, and maybe don't think of like the look back. And mm -hmm. like you said, the, the little kid, um, somebody asked me, I don't know, a while ago, you know, like what would, what would like 12 year old Ryan think of today, Ryan? I was like, that's a pretty good question. And I think, it, you know, like you said, you'd, you'd all those things. Would he be but proud? I think so. I think he would be pretty, pretty darn impressed. I've been, uh, I've been pretty fortunate to see quite a few things and, and travel the world and, and you know, do a lot more than, than most people do. You know, fortunately, work has afforded me to like traveling for work so much. And but then you go do stuff like this, and then you have those kind of isolated moments where you're like, "Wow, this is this is this." You can't swear on this on this show, but this is like really cool. <laughs> And this controls all the music. All right, that's like the, the super basic explanation. All the way, come on. All right. Twist this one a little bit. Now this one. Now this one. show we, we speak positivity always yeah. and we speak having yeah. visions and that's why you know I love you being the first on the show because I remember you're like Pablo we have this groove cruise this festival but then after that I want to I want to tour the world with DJs and then I want to do this so quickly give us a recap of the last uh, the career of Ryan Fitzpatrick an amazing career which I think it's it happens before it happened because that was your vision you wanted to do it well it, it's interesting to hear your memory on it too because I think I don't know, like, if you speak something into existence, um, that's a big thing, but I probably had to put in the work. <laughs> but I probably didn't know it was a thing too. I mean, like, I, I, don't, I don't remember telling you those things. I'm sure I did. I probably told everybody I knew, hey, I wanna go do these things. Um, yeah, so out of college, um, a guy that went to the same college I did, Jason, ran a music festival in Miami called Groove Cruise. Uh, I went to school for marketing and logistics. I was interested in, the event space, I didn't really know. I didn't really know much about the music world. I mean, I knew music on the radio, but I didn't know how any of it worked. Took a job, moved to Miami randomly, and this guy was throwing music festivals on cruise ships. And you said, what a dream. Um, sign me up. We started chartering entire cruise ships, right? So that's, you know, two, I think the first one was like 2,200 people or, or something around there. And yeah, and you were how old there? You're like you're in your yeah. I was in early, my early twenties. Early twenties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, early twenties. Um, which is wild because same hairstyle though. We were rocking it since back then. Looks great. Same we barber. don't age. It's, we don't age, baby. I think. I mean, I look in the mirror sometimes and I go, Ugh, but. So let's fast forward. Shout out to Jason Bukamai and the group. Yes. Who's twenty years this year. Yeah, twenty years. Tiesto headlining. Gotta gotta give props, Jason. Yes. Yeah. Is a, a, a. I texted him the other day. I said, Hey, man, this. It's 20 years in the works. Um, uh, and I was a, a part of a couple of them, so congrats to you guys. Cheers. Now, congrats to you. You moved on. You said, oh, yeah, I started a management company. I got in, interested in, in the other side. I was the guy that was booking all the artists. And I said, well, you know, I'm dealing with agents and managers and tour managers. I kind of want to know, or I want to be involved on the other side. Long story short, started working with some smaller DJs. They would have questions like, oh, hey, Ryan, like, what do you think I should do? Or, you know, it, it would be like, you know, you asking a friend that works in television, hey, I, I, got a, I got an offer for a thing, like, what should I tell him? Do you have a contract I can use? Do I need a lawyer? Like, 
stuff like that. And so I would pass it on because they were my friends. And then I said, well, I should maybe do this as like a thing. So started manage started a management company while I was with Groove Cruise, started managing on the side. And then a couple years into that, I left Groove Cruise full in on my uh, artist management company. And that's what I've been doing since. So manager, I also, I tour with the artists I manage. Can we too. name drop? Yeah, or sure. Yeah, so guys? I mean, the, the one that would be the most familiar would be named to Rude. Um, for the non-dance world, everybody knows a song called Sandstorm. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it played it everywhere in the world. Everywhere. Football games, soccer, baseball, you, you name it. It's... And he's an awesome guy in the room. Super great guy. Super great guy. We've been we've been friends long before I was his manager. We we probably I probably met him about the same time I met you. Um, and yeah, he and I we've I don't know we've thousand shows. Who knows how many countries? Uh, so if you guys want to follow all those shows, those trips, tell people where they can follow you because we're actually here. The Roots performing tonight. Yeah. Where are we at today? Yeah. Well, today we're. What in, are we gonna see? We're in uh, we're in Hollywood, L.A. Uh, tonight we're playing at Avalon, but this isn't going to air tonight, so you'll have to go watch later, later. clips after the fact. Uh, we come to LA like once a year normally. That's that's kind of the, the routine. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Person, and what, how is he as a manager? Ryan, who? Oh? <laughs> it's it's hard to uh, separate the two because uh, he's my friend that knows me probably too but too well. He's a very good organizer. You call him a manager, whatever it has to do with logistics, organizing, managing. He's got it covered before you can finish your sentence very firm and direct and demanding and need be which is good and yet at the same time so far he hasn't embarrassed me or got me in trouble so I appreciate that <laughs> and as a person he's stingy and sarcastic as fuck <laughs> <laughs> and I like that uh, he's, he's very direct which uh, I don't I don't like bullshit and I like that and uh, I don't know if, if, if we uh, express any deep feelings towards each other but uh, I kind of like I said I kind of feel it because we've been together for 10 years <laughs> Good times and craziest stretch of concert because people know the stars, but this is the manager. So that's what we want to hear about. What's your life like? Your schedule like on a, a Darude tour for per se? Give us some interesting. Well, so, so it's not as crazy as it used to be. Um, he's married with two kids, so he and very active husband and father nice. wants to spend a lot of time at home. So. Instead of the traditional tour where it would be like, pack my bags, see you in six months or something, he does a lot of like, fly out for a week or two, fly home, fly out, fly home, fly out, fly home. So from that standpoint, we do get some frequent breaks. Uh, our craziest, we did one time, um, we did, I think it was 23 shows in 26 days. Nice. And there was two studio sessions. How many cities? I've. Probably 20? 24. I think there was one city we did two shows. Um, and that was. That was two continents. Nice. That was, yeah, we did. It was a massive Australia run, which we do. We, we play everywhere in Australia, and then it was, I don't know, three or four shows back in the States. So that was nuts. So this show is called Positivity Always with Pablo Alcina. Darude, your music so positive. I've been hearing you for decades. Uh, Sandstorm, a classic. What what message of positivity do you have for the world and for the people? Well, uh, how much time do you have? Um, I don't know. Like people often ask me, what's my um, advice for aspiring producers and DJs? 
and I don't know what kind of language you could use on, on your uh, show, but I, I usually say, don't be a dick. And I mean it in the most general but exact way. Uh, as a person striving for something, you need to follow your passion, then you need to open doors and push them open sometimes, but don't be a dick about it. Like you can you can be forward and you know, strive for something, but you still don't have to plow other people over and eventually if you are positive I, I believe that it's gonna lead somewhere. So here is something uh, super cool. During COVID a couple years ago, I inspired my buddy Pablo to start painting. And he painted a picture of me skiing based on a picture of me skiing. Uh, so <clears throat> I finally got it here in LA, which is where he lives. Um, finally was able to grab it from him and take it home. And how cool is that? Thanks, Pablo. Love you, brother. The word is positivity always with Pablo Alcina. <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick, this was awesome. I appreciate it. Man, I, I, are you going to keep it? Because if not, I'll keep it. It's hurting my heart to give, but I know you love it. This is a one of one. That's a one of this one. This is the first painting that anybody's ever made of me. Nice. To my knowledge. Nice. To my knowledge. So that's, that's definitely coming home with me. Um, I have to say, it's humbling and... I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know the word. What's the word? Um, it makes me feel good to know that something that I've done without knowing had a positive chain effect or snowball effect on something. You know, I, I kind of you live life and do what you do, and I don't live life thinking like I want to go impact Joe over there or whoever. And you know, you've been been very gracious on 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 sharing. <laughs> the the um, just the experience of how it you know pushed you or motivated you to do whatever and, and I never I want my I want everybody around me to like do well and lift up and whatnot but I'm not thinking like I'm gonna make a post <laughs> so that I'm gonna make somebody start learning French yeah I know um, my I my shoulder was shot um, had a piece of loose bone in the rotator cuff so plus the lockdown so it couldn't work couldn't travel couldn't work out and I was like, painkillers wouldn't work. And uh, that post, and my wife buying me a painting kit, I was like, yeah, it was bad. And then I saw the post, and like, no, put in the work. I'm like, you know what? And then you, I texted you, did like a first sketch, and you're like, oh, that's not bad. Had you said that's trash, I probably stopped. Really? But since you liked it, I'm like, I'm gonna finish it. And then it just started painting itself, and then I couldn't feel the pain as much. How long did it take? Ah, uh, that one probably. Maybe I mean, it was your first one. Probably took a lot. Yeah, longer, but look, right? look, check this like, out. I'm not even going to show this. Look, that was my first sketch that I was attempting to paint something, and I'm like, wow, this is so bad. So I'm going to cover it. It's horrible. You guys so, don't even. So I'm going to cover it. So to cover it, I needed to have tons of paint. So I threw tons of paint. And I'm like, oh man, I'm going to do a skiing thing. I'm like, oh wait a minute, Ryan's challenge. So then. My error, my mistake, led to me throwing a ton of paint, which led me thinking of snow, which led me to, I'm gonna find the perfect painting, a perfect photo of Ryan to inspire me. And then I saw that, I'm like, oh man, I love it. And then the whole story behind it, I, you know, I told you. Yeah. Uh, which is just the, the childhood heart in there, who made it to the top, and that's what I see in you and Ryan. So I thank you for the inspiration, and thank you for being on number one on the show. Number one, he, he didn't answer how long it took though. Uh, like four or five days, four or five days, four or five days, four or five days. That's where is it gonna hang? I think it's gonna go in the office, um, like up above the computer monitor, nice. like kind of front and center. Means a lot. Means a lot. That or or it's gonna go like next to my ski gear, like. Like the ski, like I have, I, have, I have a closet with all my ski gear, and if it's like there, because then every, every time I go ski, like I open the door and there's like there's a thing there, and it's like there's my ski ski photo, and like all right, I'm gonna get my ski gear on. Yeah, so it's one of you skiing, one of my other super good friend Mel Bazaar, golfing, and they all kind of fit together. Yeah, so, so you were talking about though the, the theme of the of theme tell, is tell, tell me the other ones because I don't I don't remember 
like me skiing, you're golfing, golfing race, race car. a friend of mine driving, uh, racing a Ferrari, and then the doctor who operated on my shoulder, surfing. It's four people who are amazing careers, but they also have an amazing time, enjoying life, being good to people, being positive. So what message would you give to an aspiring manager of DJs, tour manager, and what a message for life on here and positivity always show numero uno con Ryan Fitzpatrick. Um, I don't know that it's specific to even music industry uh, that I would be thinking, but I didn't, I didn't really necessarily realize this until a little bit older of there's so much value in the people that you're around, right? The room that you're in. I, I don't know, you, you think growing up, I don't know, they say, oh, it's not, it's not like what you know, it's who you know. Right. But that's, that's fake and that's whatever. But it's who knows you and you have a good relationship with. Because I can know you, I can meet you once, and like whatever, I don't know, some Ryan guy. Like, right. well, whatever. But it's who you have, like, I mean, you've heard it before, the people, the five, five people in your inner circle, you're most likely mm -hmm. to be the, the sixth or whatever. And that's, um, like, I think that's really huge in life. It, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be the same career field, but if you put yourself around good people, good things happen. And, and you're just a part of, because like randomly good things are gonna go down because you're on good people. Best advice ever, surround yourself with good people, which is what I've done for over 12, 13 years. So let's go have a good time. Yeah. Thank you, brother. Boom. Boom.